Today I wanted to do some changes on my real time website builder AI app so yeah I thought I could just make a video of it so we want to add a new feature uh, but first if you haven't seen it let me just show you how this works so uh, we can just give our website description so our 2008 reddit clone click on generate website I can see in real time here that we are generating a website that is supposed to be like the early versions of reddit I think that was pretty cool right uh, let's do something else so add the up and down votes maybe something like this and now we can click on modify so this will keep our current code but just add some new code or change up the code so we don't write a full new code we just add or change something so you can see now we got the upvote system uh, it's far from perfect right but it's okay i think this is a pretty decent job uh, so this is working pretty okay so let's try give it a dark mode maybe or something like this Okay, so you can see, yeah, this was pretty good. I think this is a pretty interesting dark mode, right? Uh, we can also do some more interesting stuff. Uh, let me show you that. We can maybe do change the text of the titles to a 2008 relevant Reddit post. So now we can see if we can get something that was actually relevant to the 2008 era, I guess, or something. Let's see what we get here now. 10 hilarious moments, okay. A, the Dark Knight, a game changer. Okay, that was probably 2008. Music that defined 2008. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. Let's try to make it a bit more difficult here. So let's ask if we can find some relevant links and add them to the titles. I don't think this is going to work, but let's try it out and see if we can find some links to this. Uh, no, this is not going to work. I can see the URLs down there. It says example.com. Uh, you can see when I click on this now. Nope. Uh, let's try one more thing first. So let's just do find an IBM link to Dark Knight and link to the Dark Knight title. So let's see if that works. Last attempt before. Uh, the feature we are gonna integrate today is to add images. So I thought uh, this app could now start generating images based on the user's input. So this could be like an image of the Dark Knight for example. So today I thought I can just go through how I plan to integrate this. Uh, I think we're just gonna use cursor. We're going to use maybe some Claude, OpenAI, maybe GPT-4.0, we'll see. So we're just going to take, I think we're going to use the Flux API that I used in the previous video. So yeah, we're just going to take it as is and see if we can actually implement this AI feature into our already existing app here. So oh, did it work? Let's try it. Yeah, okay, that was pretty cool. So now we got the Dark Knight link here in our website. So you can see we also have this... Uh, that's probably behind my head. Uh, extract code. So we can download this uh, HTML and just click on this. And we have it like an HTML file here, right? So we can look at the source code, right? Uh, yeah. So you can see here if you wanted to do that. And we can open that in a code editor and write. So yeah, a pretty fun app. Uh, so yeah, let's just go over to... I think we're going to start on cursor. Or look at the API and see if we can try to integrate this. Uh, into uh, our app. So if we take a look at our backend here, uh, you can see we are running this on GPT-4 or Mini to try to make it as quick as possible. And you can see here we kind of have the user input is kind of create a website with the following description and we as the user feed the description in right in our input box. Uh, return the HTML and CSS separately and close the code box. And we have something on down here you can see uh, on the modify part, we also do some regex up here, you can see, to try to always return uh, from the API like a uh, yeah, good HTML code that we can render in our preview window. But what I wanted to focus on is that we are running GPT-4 Mini, so we are optimizing this for speed. Uh, of course, you could just try GPT-4.0 if you wanted to do that, but since we are optimizing for speed, uh, I thought we can actually continue that when we are picking our image generator. Also, you can see we are, of course, streaming because if we want to generate this or render this in real time, we have to stream the tokens because if we just get it like in one single block of code, uh, we won't be able to create a UX experience of you can seeing the website being built, right? So we actually have to stream every token from OpenAI. Um, of course, we can't do that with the image, but I have a plan for that, I think. Uh, but now let's head over to Replicate and look at our model. So if we head over to Replicate, they have uh, the 
Black Forest Lab have the Flux Schnell model. So this is the fastest image generator model uh, since we think we want to use that today since we really want to optimize for speed uh, and I have a really simple API here. So let's just start by installing this. So we can do this on our backend here. So let's just stop this and install replicate. That is what we have to install. Uh, if you don't have an API, you can just sign up and go to your API tokens and we can use this, right? So uh, I'm going to grab some um, code here and I'm going to give like um, a cursor, like a prompt. I'm going to think about a bit about this prompt, how we can do it. Uh, so yeah, let me just think out that. And I'll be right back. Okay, so here you can see the prompt uh, I think I want to try. So you can see we are wrapping this in these uh, XML tags. Here I just pasted in the information from the uh, Replicate API. And my instructions are my app is uh, works great. It generates a HTML CSS that is rendered live in the preview in real time. I want to add a new feature where the app can create images that would fit the web page using an API. And then I say replicate flux API and the API returns a URL that links to an image. Let's add a feature where our app can include the generated image URL in the rendered CSS code, please. So this is what I want to try. So if we go back to cursor now, I'm just going to paste this in and we're going to do like a control enter that kind of uses our full code base as context. And let's see if we can actually start implementing this feature I want in my app. Okay, so we have a bunch of instructions here back from uh, Cursor. So I'm just going to apply all of these new instructions to our code base. Uh, we don't have to create any new files. We're just going to update our existing code base. So that's a good sign. So let me just go through this and add all these new lines of code and functions to our code and let's see where we are at. Okay, so after going a bit back and forward, uh, we needed to add one new component. So we just up, uh, created like a image service.js. So this just contains our generate image function that we can send our prompt to. It has the replicate API token, right? We can have our settings here. We can change our aspect ratio. Pretty standard, easy to set up and this uh, export this as generate image and we can take advantage of this in uh, you can see here we created um, in the generate website let me close this so now you can see we changed up our prompt i can zoom in a bit so you can see now we kind of have create a website with the following description so this is the description we put in up here right for some reason i lost the color here oh that's a dark mode sorry <laughs> Uh, that's the description we put in here, right? And include this image URL in the HTML image URL. And this is generated up here. So the prompt is now generate an image for a website with the following description. And here we also feed in the description and we will get an image back from the generate image function. So we feed in the image prompt. This will trigger this image function and it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, I just tested it quickly. Other than that, we also added this option in the modify website. So I haven't tried that, but we have to test if that works too. Uh, so let me just show you now if we head back to, uh, we didn't, we made a small change on the front end, but not much, Mo most of it was on back end. But if we go back here now, and I also created my replicate key in the .env. So if we go back here now, let's say we do uh, a World of Warcraft website, right? And generate website, hopefully now. Uh, okay, so we failed to fetch. Oh, I haven't started the server. Uh, so let me fix that. Okay, so now it's running. So let's try again. <laughs> so hopefully now this will generate an image that can be embedded into our site. Okay, that was pretty cool, right? So now you can see, uh, yeah, we have an image at least on our site. But I'm, I'm wondering what happens now if I try to modify this. So let me come up with something. So I'm curious what happens. Let's say I say, give it a dark theme. This is probably gonna change the image, isn't it? 
and that's not too good so we might have to find a solution for that yeah you can see now we kind of changed the image too uh, can we go back go back to the pre image let's see if we can do that i haven't tried that uh maybe it can no <laughs> so this is sending a new request all the time so let's try to come up with a logic to fix that because uh, i think we want to generate uh, to keep the original image we can maybe add some new ui here so people can generate a new image and keep the modify and the new image generator separate uh, let's try to do that. I think that's a good solution. So let me try to fix that. Okay, so I think I come up with a prompt here. So you can see uh, the app is working, but we need to make some changes. We need to separate out the generate image function in the modify website function. So you can see we have this up here, right? So we are calling the generate image function here and the image prompt, right? So I think we want to separate this out. So I said we can create a new separate text uh, input field where the user can generate an image to be used as context for the modify website new image URL here. So this is what we are feeding down here in the prompt, right? Or for the context. So we are feeding this image URL. So this is the same that we created when we create a new image. So I said we can call this new image URL, uh, image URL2. So this can be generated from the second uh, input field, I hope. This will give the user more control of the generated image without changing the full website. Implement this change, please. So let's try this. So of course, I'm going to do control enter to use the full code base as context. And I'll be right back when we have the response. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, update our uh, front end to add this new input box, I think, right? Uh, yeah, we need to add a new state for the image URL and all of this, update the service. So I'm not going to bother you with this. I'm going to go through each step here, add the new code. Uh, should be super quick. And then we can see if we can actually get this to work. Okay, so this is promising. So there was another few things I had to change. Uh, that was basically the UI uh, adjustments. So if we go to our app now, you can see we have a new field here called generate image. You can see I still have some adjustments. I probably have to do like a gap here, but it's fine for now. But now you can see we have this generate image uh, addition part here. So let's say now, okay, we can do our um, World of Warcraft site again. We're going to try something else after, but let's just continue with this theme, right? Uh, World of Warcraft, that is going to be the theme for the website. Okay, pretty cool. That's a cool image, right? I thought that was pretty cool. The text is great. And we can do, uh, let's say, center the image, please. Right? So now we are on the modify part. So you can see, hopefully, now this is not going to change the image. Great. Uh, yeah, we got that centered. Perfect. Uh, and now you can see the thing we have now is um, uh, World of Warcraft. Paladin Okay So now we have a small preview here of an image, right? Okay, I can't really make it too big. That's kind of my idea, but you can see it down here and then we can do add the new image, please remove the old Is this gonna work? Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. So that is pretty cool if you ask me now we swapped out the images and we can do like uh, a wow hunter holding a sign that uh, that says sign up now I don't know and we can generate this and we can try to add this into our um, website right uh, so Add the new image, please. Remove the old. And boom, we have it. That was pretty cool. And now we can do... I think we can do... Add a dark mode. Modify. And now we should keep the image, right? Before we had to change up the image, but now we can change up the image, right? And we can keep the image. 
and also get our dark mode. I guess we didn't <laughs> toggle dark mode. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, but you get the point. That was pretty cool. Uh, for fun, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I, I thought that worked out pretty good, exactly as I wanted, to be honest. Let's try to make uh, a few more websites just for fun and see what we can actually do with this. Okay, so I'm just gonna create a super smooth advanced landing page for a product, include advanced CSS styling, dark team with optimal readability. So now, of course, the image is gonna be bad, right? So, of course, we could remove the image. <laughs> you can see this is gonna be horrible, right? And okay, but the, the page is fine, right? I think it looks pretty smooth. Uh, and now we can kind of grab our product. So let's come up with a product. Advanced banana peeler, uh, clear background, right? Okay. Remove the old image, insert the new. Center it, okay. <laughs> okay, so that was pretty cool. And then we can do write some marketing copy for the advanced banana peeler, include price, right? <laughs> okay, so now we have only 1990. <laughs> I don't really know what it is, <laughs> it looks pretty strange. So let's add an other image just for fun. <laughs> so let's just do add a stock photo of a woman holding a banana with the text above. How can I peel this? Uh, okay, so let's see now. Uh, is this the full image? I'm not. Let's try to add this. So let's just do add a new image, make it half the size of the other one, place it under the price. So let's see if we can do that. Okay. Yeah, that was cool, right? So, how can I peel this? <laughs> that was horrible. Order now. Oh, we got this sweet animation here. Uh, okay, I think this was pretty cool. Uh, let's do one more thing before we extract this. So, let's do add a 3D effect to the banana peeler image. I just want to see if it picked the correct image. Yeah. Wow, that was awesome, right? It slides away like this. This was super cool. I enjoy this. The ultimate solution for effortless peeling. So maybe I should move my camera a bit here. Okay, so let's extract this code and we can go into our website, right? Yeah, that was cool, right? Introducing this, we have this animation here, we have this, how can I peel this? Super cool. That's pretty fast how to make a pretty cool website if you ask me. So yeah, hope you enjoy this. If you are interested in it, and two, three. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you are interested in the code, uh, just become a member of the channel. If you want to support me, you can find the link to the code. I'm going to upload this to the members GitHub if you want to try it out. I have a, e an easier version on just my GitHub. You can find that link in the description. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy your weekend and we speak uh, probably on Sunday.